Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to see for Jesus Christ. God is good all the time. and all the time. All the time. And that is his nature indeed. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, dear family members, on behalf of the Me Hill Second Cycle Formation Community here in Nairobi, I wish to heartily welcome you all to this year's celebration of the perpetual oath, during which nine of our brothers are going to make their, uh, their final commitment as Me Hill missionaries. We know that every call, every vocation, has its origin from God. And God always takes the initiative. So what we celebrate today is the generous response of our brothers to that call. It is a cause for great joy. As I welcome the whole Mihil family here this afternoon, and I welcome the friends and families of our brothers I wish in a special way as well to welcome our society representative for East Africa, Father Joseph King Afumambo, who is going to lead us in today's celebration. He is the official delegate of our general superior. And for our brothers and sisters who are following us online, especially the French-speaking community, mes chers frères et sœurs, c'est avec une grande joie que je vous accueille à notre célébration eucharistique ici à la maison de formation missionnaire de Mihil à Nairobi. Nous sommes très heureux car aujourd'hui, nos frères, après dix ans de formation, feront leur serment perpétuel dans notre congrégation. C'est une occasion de joie et aussi l'occasion de rendre grâce à Dieu. La messe de cet après-midi sera présidée en anglais par notre supérieur ici en Afrique de l'Est, le Père Joseph King. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes. Karibu nisana ndugu zangu, tushirikike pamoja na ndugu zetu ambao watafanya adhiri zao za mwisho siku ya leo. Father, welcome and lead us in today's celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.
who laid down for the human race the law of work. Graciously grant that by the example of Saint Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading a reading from the letter of saint paul to the colossians brethren over all this put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in the one body and be thankful. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever you are, your task, work heartily, as serving the Lord and not men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalmist Give success to the work of our hands, O Lord. Give success to the work of our hands, O Lord. Oh, life. 
When the missionary had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod. That what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod had died, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilla was, was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene.
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let those who seek to make their perpetual oath to St. Joseph's Missionary Society please come forward. Frederick Botaka Yufela. Here I am, Lord, send me. Roger Chuenkam Chuante. Here I am, Lord, send me. Elvis Chamboli Ochoi Bate. Here I am, Lord, send me. Joseph Tamfu Kanjo. Here I am, Lord, send me. Clement Kitoli Ifala. Here I am, Lord. Jean-Louis Lekandome Ekokoyo. Here I am, Lord, send me. Austin Ocheng Otieno. Here I am, Lord, send me. Bruno Tumwesije. Here I am, Lord, send me. Dennis Wanjala Guire. Dear Father, I have the joy of presenting to you these candidates for perpetual membership in our society. They are Frederic and Jean Louis from the DRC. Roger, Elvis, and Joseph from Cameroon, Bruno from Uganda, Clement, Austin, and Dennis from Kenya. After consultation with our members and associates who have known them in community, in pastoral placements, and elsewhere, as well as their fellow students, they have been accepted by the formation staff the East Africa Area Council, and the General Council. Dear brothers, what do you ask of God and of his Holy Church? We ask for God's merciful love and for the grace of serving him more perfectly as members of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. Thanks, Thanks be to God. is good. All the time. And all the time. All is good. Once again this year I am privileged to welcome new blood into our media society on behalf of the General Superior and the General Council. Nine young energetic men taking their perpetual oath. It is an evening of commitment and engagement by our brothers with God and the church 
through our society. My dear friends, we live in a career-driven world where everyone seeks to climb the social, the political, and the material ladder. Very few search for the spiritual ladder for the sake of it. Service and the positions in the church have also just become another social promotion. At final vows or perpetual oath like this one today or at ordination like tomorrow, there is joy, there is happiness. People rejoice at the completion of a step in their calling towards priesthood or religious life. To some, it is a point of arrival. To others, the beginning of greater discernment as each person seeks fulfillment. This evening, we celebrate the perpetual oath of our brothers, Bruno Lecandon, Tanfu, Trenkam Twante, Frederic Botaka, Chamboli, Clement, Austin, and uh, Dennis. You have accepted to become Mill Hill missionaries. And we celebrate you committing yourselves today for life in the service of God through the Mill Hill missionaries. You commit yourselves to the life of loving service. This is a choice done by the individual, not forced. And that is why this journey is started it's begun by many, but very few ended. In your class, you were very many, but at the end of the day, only you are taking the perpetual oath. Is it because you are worthy more than others? Maybe not. This choice you've made is done out of free will and in obedience to God who calls us. At baptism, whether as kids or as adults, we chose to follow God and be part of his one big Christian family. Even if we were led by our parents, our parents, we confront this as we grow up. And we make choices to follow him closely. And today, that one is being confirmed as members of Mill Hill Society. We chose the Mill Hill way. And today we rejoice that you are confirming this by committing yourselves to loving service. It is a big step, and we thank God for how far he has brought you guys. Whenever we make a choice, dear friends, we try always to go for the better or for the best option. And there is a lot of sacrifice that goes with it in order for us to concentrate on the choice that we have made. We let go of others. When we choose the one God in whom we believe, we let go of all the other tiny gods around us. 
You know, in the African society, we used to worship gods under the tree, in the river, uh, in, in the rocks, and they would go and throw food to them at some point. But when we became Christians, we said, okay, to hell with those other gods. Now, we believe in those one God. And we seek his will only. And we seek that will all our lives. And when we chose Mill Hill, you know, when we sing the song for he is a Mill Hill man, he would have been a Capuchin or a Cistercian or what, what. When we chose Mill Hill, we let go of the others. And we follow where the society leads us in discovering the will of God in our lives. Sometimes we may falter, sometimes we may doubt, but we that God will lead us. Say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Just like the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, and Psalms 39. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. You, that is a response of a ready servant. Somebody who is ready to go out. In being missionaries, my dear friends, we are called first to be human. Human enough to love. Human enough to serve. Without that humanity, we might just be robots. Serving our own selves. Working for ourselves. For me, myself, and I. And that is when our calling becomes just a career and a social step. Everything we do will be not for the benefit of the people we serve, but for us. Humanity brings us to love and to pray. Our reading today in the St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. In everything, brethren, put on love. That is the only thing. Humanity invites us to love. To pray. It brings us to care and to share. Sharing our life which is broken like Christ for others. Humanity leads us to seek the good of others before ourselves. Humanity is our mission. But with the heart and the face of Christ. I dare ask you, my dear friends, do you have humanity enough in you? Because we may actually be human. No, we may actually be human beings, but we are not human enough. Our call comes with a lot of humility. Remember Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Although he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count equality. He humbled himself, becoming human, being obedient, even unto death. So in accepting God's will, we do it selflessly. That's why at both the temporary and the perpetual oath, what do you first promise? Obedience. You do not even start with poverty or chastity. What do you promise? Because at the end of the day, are you even poor? Are we even chaste? We are just there. But we promise obedience. Because in obedience, everything flows. It is not by error that we promise obedience, mainly. Obedience is humility. In obedience, we become the little ones. Allowing ourselves to be led by the Spirit of God. Where the Spirit leads us, we go. In obedience, we become keen listeners 
like our patron, St. Joseph. We take the Orthodox Mass of St. Joseph today. We do not just dream, but we pay attention and meditate on the message God gives us. Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to Egypt. That's the gospel we heard today. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Get up, take the child and his mother back to the land. Joseph did not question God. And neither did he only remain at the level of dreaming. Because he would have said, these are just dreams. He understood God was speaking and he listened. We do not start arguments and questions even before we have taken the first step. And this is a challenge to our generation, my dear friends. To listen, to obey, and to follow. It's a big challenge for us today. And I always laugh sometimes that we begin formation as young people, always very holy very humble, innocent, respectful, and prayerful fellows. But at the end of our formation and our ordination, yeah, we are more educated, but I don't know whether we are more formed or deformed. Because sometimes we become more stubborn, a bit faithless, individualistic, prayerless, and sometimes even proud. And that's why you find people in mission sometimes, our actions in ministry can make people even wonder whether we are Christians, not to talk of being priests or people who are dedicated to God in a particular way. And as they say, be careful how you live your life. You may be the only Bible some people will ever read. And that's why the life of witness is very important. How has formation formed us to be human? To be available? Because it so happens that along the way, when some of us feel we have arrived, we begin to question the same God who calls us to follow him. And the same tenets of faith that we receive when we accepted that call. In the same way, we begin to question the same society we committed ourselves to. We question the same guidelines that have formed us and I've formed many in the past. So sometimes I ask, what could have changed? What has changed, brothers? So today, as we ask you, you I would like to repeat, what do you seek, brothers? What do you ask of God and of his church? That's the question we just asked you. And if we reflect on these questions, which you have just responded to this evening, we'll understand that we are not seeking something of our own. We are seeking something gratuitous. We are asking somebody to make us more of him and like him. We are seeking to be part of his salvific mission. Part of his life. Not our vision. So therefore, let the celebration of the perpetual oath, and every time we do it, let it stop being just a ceremony. Let it be a moment of greater discernment to what we ask from God. And especially us, the million missionaries, through our society. Tomorrow, you will be ordained deacons and hopefully priests next year. And I'm sure some of you are already preparing beforehand. 
Some are planning how to negotiate or maybe argue with their sock reps and their parish priests how and where their ordination will be. Others are planning what kind of vestments we're going to get, the gifts or how much we'll make from our ordination ceremonies. Fair enough, good, everything works out well. But does it really matter where and how and when you are ordained? If we are ordained in a hut, does it really matter? What are you committing yourself to? And who will you be ordained for? What and whom are you looking for? That's the question we should all be answering. Are you seeking yourself? The position you are kind of elevated to? Or the life to serve after Christ? Who reminds us, you did not choose me, I chose you. John chapter 15 verse 16. And without me, or apart from me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5. You are chosen, man. Gentlemen, you have been chosen, you have been called. So it's not your mission. And therefore we must understand that we are only sharers in the life and mission of Christ. Sometimes when we joke as missionaries, we talk about some of our elders who have worked in a place and when they are leaving, they say, mission is close. Let's hand over. Is it your mission? What are you handing over? You know? Mission continues and mission is everywhere. And pastoral is not limited to, to, to parish or what. You are all on mission, wherever you are placed, be it a school, be it information, whatever village you are, or town, or ministry, you are on mission. And that is Christ's mission, not ours. And he is that source of mission. So for us to be effective disciples and followers, we must love him. We must love humanity. We must listen in order to follow. And in listening, we surrender to him and his will. Alone, in truthful, simplistic obedience. In that way, as we read from Gaudium et Spes, number one, reminds us that the joys, if we do so, the joys and the hopes, the grief and anguish of the people of our time, especially the poor and the afflicted, in any way, should be and will always be the joys, the hope, the grief and anguish of the followers of Christ, you and me. So, as I round, I therefore ask you, brothers, and I challenge you, and all of us, are you humble and obedient enough to take the perpetual oath? Don't say I'm bringing in new questions. I'm just inviting us to reflect. Are you humble enough to be a servant? And do you have humanity enough in you to serve? Are you human enough to love? We pray for you, brothers, and for all of us in formation. May St. Joseph, our principal patron, who was obedient to God's will, who listened and worked quietly without alarm, lead us to total obedience and simplicity in our life of service. Amen.
Dear brothers, have you carefully studied and understood the constitutions and the code of conduct of St. Joseph's Missionary Society? I have carefully studied them and I have understood them. The death of many missionaries reminds us of the dangers we encounter in committing ourselves to witness to the gospel of Jesus. Therefore I ask you, is it your desire to become perpetual members of the society and to persevere in it until death? Such by the grace of God is my desire. Do you desire to take the perpetual oath in the society? which will give stability to your commitment and to put you at the total service of God for his people. Such is my desire. I ask to be allowed to take the perpetual oath now and thus to bind myself permanently to the service of God in the apostolic life. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment before the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand for the litany. Dear friends, let us pray to God the Almighty Father that through the intercession of our patron saints he may bless his servants with his grace and lovingly strengthen them in their resolve. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of the Church and Queen of the Apostles. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, protector of the church and our principal patron. Pray for us. Saint Peter, first of the apostles and vicar of Christ. Pray for us. Saint Paul chosen instrument for the conversion of nations. Pray for us. Saint Francis of Assisi, proclaimer of Christ in total simplicity. Pray for us. Saint Francis Saviour, model of missionary zeal. Pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, missionary by desire in your spiritual journey. Pray for us. Saints Paul, Mickey and companions, Missionary Martyrs of Japan. St. Daniel Komboni, Apostle to the Enslaved in Africa. St. Therese of Lisieux, Patroness of the Missions. St. Charles Luanga and Companions, First Martyrs of Uganda. St. John Paul II, Model of Apostolic Ministry. St. Therese of Kolkata, Kolkata, servant of God in the poorest of the poor. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Protomartyr of the Philippine Islands. Pray for us. Blessed Bakanja and Anabit, models of faith to the youth. Pray for us. All holy missionaries and ancestors of our faith. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, save your people. By your coming as a man. Lord, save your people. By your death and rising to new life. Lord, save your people. By your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people. Keep Pope Francis and all the clergy in faithful service to your church. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead all people to the full knowledge of Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen our missionary society in your service, in the spirit of our founder. Lord, hear our prayer. Make these your servants more Christ-like, and give them grace to persevere in their purpose. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Please be seated.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our general superior delegate, Father Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Botaka Yufela Frederick, from the Diocese of Basankusu, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of St. Joseph, our patron, St. Therese of Lucier, patroness of mission, our ancestors and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under oath for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me God and the this his holy gospel. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, the very Reverend Father Joseph King Afumabu, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Chuenkam Chuante Roger, from the Diocese of Mamfe, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron, Saint Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself on the earth for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me God and this his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no, aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, Reverend Father Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Elvis Ochoe Bate Chamboli, from the Diocese of Kumba, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself on the oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron, 
St. Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors and all the saints, I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to fully consecrate myself under oath for life to this act. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. His Holy Gospels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our, our General Superior, Deborah Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faith, Joseph Tamfu, from the Diocese of Kumbo, to you. St. Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors and all the saints, I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under oath for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So, help me God and these his holy gospels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, Father Joseph King, I, Clement Kitoli Ifana, from the Diocese of Kakamega, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron, Saint Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors, and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate, consecrate myself under oath for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. God and this is Holy Gospels. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit and before your, before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, Father Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Jean-Louis Le Candom Ekokoyo, from the Diocese of Basankusu, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, 
I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron, Saint Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors, and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under oath for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me God, and this is Holy Gospels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, Father Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Austin Ochem Ochenu, from the Diocese of Homa Bay, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron, Saint Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors, and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under oath for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me, Holy Gospels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, you said, let your yes be yes, and your no be no aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Tumwesi de Bruno, from the Diocese of Kabale, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the most blessed trinity of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, our patron saint, Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, and this community, that it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under oath for life and to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph's Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me God and these his holy gospels.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, you said, Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Aided by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and before your representative, our General Superior Delegate, Father Joseph King, and in the presence of the community of the faithful, I, Wanjala Denis Buire, from the Diocese of Bungoma, truthfully make this public testimony. Freely in my heart and spirit, I bind myself under oath to you, Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Trinity, of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, of St. Joseph, our patron, of St. Therese of Lisieux, patroness of mission, our ancestors, and all the saints. I publicly declare before you, Father, in this community, that it is my it is my sincere desire to follow Christ as a missionary. I solemnly consecrate myself under all for life to this apostolic work as a member of St. Joseph Missionary Society. I also promise obedience to the General Superior in accordance with the constitutions of the society. So help me God in this his holy gospels. Relying on the power of God's Holy Spirit, we shall try to be like Christ, messengers of the good news and to spread the kindness and love of God our Savior. We are ready to leave our home countries and give up the security of bonds with our families and friends. We shall endeavor to become men of prayer and become ever more familiar with the life and teaching of Christ and to live a total availability to the communities to which we are sent. We trust with the help of God's grace to be able to carry out our resolve and ask all in the present and all the members of St. Joseph's Missionary Society for their prayers and moral support. Let us stand. Let us pray. Father in heaven, source of all holiness, creator of the human race, your love for us is so great that you gave us a share in your own divine life. You sent your son Jesus Christ as our pattern of holiness and he became poor to make us rich, a slave to set us free. The voice of the Spirit has drawn countless numbers of your children to follow in the footsteps of your Son. They leave all things to be one with you in the bonds of love and give themselves wholly to your service and the service of all your people. Look with favor then on these our brothers who have heard your call. Send them the Spirit of holiness Help them to fulfill in faith what you have enabled them to promise in joy. Keep always before their eyes Christ, the Good Shepherd. May they build up the church by the holiness of their lives, advance the salvation of the world, and stand as a sign of the blessing that are to come. Lord, protect and guide these servants of yours in the paths of salvation, at the judgment seat of your Son, be yourself their just reward. Made perfect in your love, may they rejoice in the communion of your saints and praise you forever in their company. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Frederick. Receive the symbol of the red sign. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wear it always upon your heart and bear it with you into whatever lands you may be sent to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you, sh you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wear it always upon your heart to be your for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ, wear it always upon your heart, and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent, to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation. Joseph, receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wear it always upon your heart and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Clement, receive the symbol of the red sash. That will be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wear it always upon your heart and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent to be your strength and protection your consolation and salvation in life and in death. jean let Receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ, wear it always upon your heart, and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent, to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Austin, receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God. Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ, wear it always upon your heart, and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent, to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Bruno, receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should have for the people entrusted to you and of your readiness to give yourself to the utmost for the love of God.
Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ, wear it always upon your heart, and bear it with you into whatever land you may be sent, to be your strength and protection, your consolation and salvation in life and in death. Dennis, receive the symbol of the red sash. Let it be a sign to you of the love you should for the love of God. <laughs> Accept the crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ, your consolation and salvation in life and
So dear friends, we are going to continue now with the Eucharistic celebration, with the Eucharistic liturgy, preceded by the presentation of gifts. The bread and wine is going to be brought forward by the family of Denis Wanjala. Um, it's a special day for them because today is the 13th anniversary of um, uh, Humphrey Wanjala. So the mother and his brother are going to bring up the
God found the Vobana offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you through Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere. To give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise. To glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit our Lord Jesus Christ through him the angels praise your majesty dominions adore and powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together in exaltation may our voices we pray join with you in humble praise as we acclaim. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David Kamau, our administrator, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people, and, and you are served wholeheartedly the seventy, and whom you have brothers and sisters, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, death anniversaries occur today, the father of Dennis whose death anniversary also occurs today, our family members, friends, benefactors, and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, the spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who says to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us show each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through Him. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is good and all the time shortly dear brothers and sisters I we shall be listening to a vote of thanks to um, one of the new members spiritual members of me here. But before he does that, I just wish to express as well a word of thanks to all of you who have come to celebrate with us. It's been, this, the celebration today is different because of your presence. So I want to appreciate all the friends, all the neighbors, all the family members, the Mihil family members who are here. We thank you very, very much for, our, for coming to be with us and as well, we say a big congratulations to our brothers who have made this very, very big step today. Congratulations. Please a lot of applause. Louder, 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 louder. Very, 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 very much. I think we have um, a, a, a song of thanksgiving. So shortly before, um, um, before, before the, the vote of thanks is given, we shall all stand up or invite us to stand up and give that, um, sing that song of thanksgiving. But before I sit, I just want to acknowledge we have um, in, the, in our presence Father Isaac, um, who is really very much an offshoot of me. Here, Father, are you sitting somewhere? Yes, Father Isaac is right there at the corner. Um, Father Isaac is a priest in the U.S. and he came in with some visitors who have managed to find acknowledge your presence and we appreciate your presence. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, and thank you, Father, for the good one, brothers, and um, uh, sing together that song of thanksgiving. Oh, 
Mwenzifu Yesu Kristo. Amen. Our area society representative of St. Joseph's Missionary Society, Reverend Father Joseph King Afumabo, who has welcomed us into the society as perpetual members. I recognize your presence. Our dear parents present, those in absentia, our guardians, priests of different religious congregations, friends, and all people of good will, especially those following us online. My name is Tumwesije Bruno from the Diocese of Kabale, Uganda. In 2013, during Pope Francis's one-day pilgrimage to Assisi on a visit to the young people, he said, and he called upon the youth not to be afraid of taking definitive steps in their lives. Because for him, Jesus did not save us provisionally, but he saved us definitively. This message is for us all and has come to true for the nine of us today. You can all agree with me, especially the Mid Hill students who are here, that it is everybody's desire as an aspirant to one day reach a point where you are allowed as a perpetual member. It doesn't mean that is the final end, but it means that you have taken a step. It's a milestone in your life. Listening to our superior general yesterday on a Zoom call mentioned the words, Welcome, brothers. In his short speech to the community after Mass yesterday, it felt like the doors had opened for us. It felt like someone had welcomed us into the family, and it made us feel proud and have a sense of belonging. Thank you, Father Michael Cochran, for your generous words. Therefore, on behalf of my fellow new perpetual members, I would like to extend messages of gratitude first to God, who called us and sustained us on this discernment journey. Secondly, I would like to thank our parents and guardians all the way from Kabale, Uganda, the hero Bungoma, Luanda, Homa Bay, Cameroon, and DRC, who having been the foundation of our faith, they brought us into this faith and supported us all the way. We would like to thank you for that. We would like to thank all Mill Hill members here present who have had a significant impact on our vocation journey. I will not also forget the impact of our fellow students who through our stay in the community challenge us, assist us, and inspire us to be better. They keep pushing us because it is true that every day is a journey of growth. We would like to thank our formators at both levels from basic formation up to the second cycle in Nairobi. We would like to particularly thank Father Damien Fu, who is our rector, Father Dominic Nyachoti, Father Jacob Kilka, and Sister Medri. Thank you very much for putting up with us Thank you very much for supporting us, encouraging us, challenging us. I will also not forget the people who have helped us on this journey, especially our supervisors and MAP coordinators, some who are here and others who probably are following us online. I would also like to thank the catechists as we were out there for MEP experience, we had various people who would take us around, especially the catechists and people who didn't have 
uh, portfolios or they were not recognized by uh, different groups in the church, but took upon the responsibility upon themselves to guide us, support us, and journey with us as we went out to visit the sick, taking communion to the sick, and working with the different groups. As remnants on this discernment journey, our strength and motivation has come from our classmates with whom we started with right from basic formation up to the second cycle here. Over time, some withdrew from the system, some were withdrawn from the system, but all in all, they went on to pursue other career goals in life. But through various mediums on social media, we have managed to keep in touch. I know most of them are following us right on social media platforms. We would like to say thank you very much for challenging us, supporting us, and always being there with us in this struggle. And we ask you that you do not stop from there. Continue to be part of us because we are all headed and we are all working towards the kingdom of God. To all friends, those present and those following us online, as I conclude, we thank you all. This is not the finish line for us. And ultimately, we have not made it. It is, but a goal and an achievement, yes. But we have ascended to the commitment of loving service in contribution to the work of salvation of Jesus. Thus, we still need your prayers and support. Through the grace of God, we hope to not only fulfill our tasks, but most importantly, as Father Cochran yesterday said, to rise up each day with joy and enthusiasm in anticipation of the, missionary, of, the mission of Christ. Because to him, as missionaries, there are some days when you wake up and you don't feel like getting out of the bed. There are some days when you are so low. There are some days when things are not working out. But he encouraged us to pick us each other every day with joy and enthusiasm and participate in the mission of Christ. We ask the Lord whom we have pledged our commitment to today to help us. I wish you all a blessed evening <coughs> and I wish you all the best in the activities that follow. For my brothers, congratulations. Thank you very much. The struggle continues. <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of the East Africa area, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate our brothers upon taking the perpetual oath. Hearty congratulations. We are proud of you and we are happy as an area that more and more young people are joining the society, are committing themselves in the service of God. And also, our missions are flourishing. Thank you very much, and congratulations. I think I have done my work. And on behalf of the General Council, that Mike, that Father Michael spoke to you yesterday, I continue to send their congratulations. I was just a servant, and I did what I was supposed to do. And I'm happy I have done it, and I've finished my work. <laughs> May we stand for the final blessing. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show, his, show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of our Holy Mass. Join us tomorrow for the Diaconate Ordination. Please subscribe to be part of us tomorrow. May God bless you. Now you can see our new members taking photos. Congratulations, brothers. We are proud of you. Congratulations to the choir. Thank you to those who have been following us online. Continue to pray for our brothers as they take this important step in their lives.